Good morning. Let us start the chapter one. In this chapter one, first uh, we will learn what is a product. Product is anything that can be offered to someone to satisfy a need or wants, isn't it? So a soccer ball is a product. According to William Stanton, product is a complex of tangible and intangible attributes, including packaging, color, price, prestige and services that is satisfy needs and wants of people. That means uh, product includes both tangible as well as intangible attributes. Suppose we are buying a car. Car comes along with after sales service, which are intangible. If you're buying a soap, the soaps comes in a package and uh, different soap have di different color. They have a uh, different price, different prestige. Some uh, soaps are sold at 100 rupee or some others are sold at 10 rupee. Isn't it? So product is a complex of tangible and intangible attributes, including packaging, color, price, prestige, and service that satisfy needs and wants of people. Now let us learn uh, components of a product. Uh, it is written here, components of a product. A product has uh, several components. As uh, we discussed according to this uh, definition, it comes along with a package, different color, different price, etc. So components of a product simply means different parts of a product. The first part is core product. Isn't it? Which, which is the basic element of the product. Take a soap. What is the core product? The soap itself. For example, if you take Dove soap, uh, the fragrance, moisturizing ability, pristine white color, brand name, price, everything are superimposed on the core product. Isn't it? The core component is the soap. Here, the core component is the soap and all this uh, brand name, packaging, everything is super imposed on the core product. And uh, uh, in the case of a soap, uh, in, the, in the case of Dove soap, the core product is the soap. Then what is associated features? So if you take a Dove soap, the fragrance, the moisturizing ability, pristine white color, all these things are associated features. In the market, you can find 10 different types of soap. Isn't it? The core product is soap itself, but uh, all these soaps are different based on their associated features. Life Boy, you can find uh, in red color. Dove Soap, you can find in white color. Uh, Life Boy is uh, mainly used for killing germs, according to the marketer. And uh, Dove Soap, uh, it is used for different purpose like uh, moisture, moisturizing, all these things. Isn't it? So the total product personality is mostly enhanced through the associated features. So in the case of Dove soap, fragrance, moisturizing ability, pristine white color, etc., are associated features. And uh, the next component of a product is brand name. Nowadays, uh, very uh, few products which are coming without a brand name. Almost all product comes with a brand name. And uh, brand name is nothing but a name, term, or symbol, or design, which will uh, distinguish one product from another, isn't it? <coughs> so one name, term, symbol, or design, which will uh, distinguish uh, uh, one product from another. Like uh, Life Boy is a brand name, Dove is a different brand name. When a uh, brand name is uh, uh, brand mark is registered, it will become trademark. And uh, trademark is having legal protection. Next one is a uh, logo. It's a brand mark or symbol, isn't it? 
uh, and, and essential aspects of the product, extending support to the brand effectively. You can find sometimes symbols, pictures, etc. And uh, it is easy to identify the brand, and also it is easy to remember or recall the brand, isn't it? Uh, if you look at the Air India logo, the Maharaja, we remember Air India first, isn't it? Package. We will wrap the product for protecting it, for giving necessary information over the package, or maybe for some aesthetic or sales appeal, or maybe <laughs> maybe for uh, using it as a promotional tool. Label. On package, you can find label, and uh, in label, you can find uh, all the necessary information about the product, like uh, manufacturing date, expiry date, country of origin, brand name, if there any st statutory warning is there, any other type of warning is there, ingredients, all this information you can find on a label. So we can see that uh, every product is having their own personality and uh, there are different components of a product. The components of a product includes the core product, associated features, its brand name, logo, package, and label. Now let us learn the characteristics of a product. Uh, the product is one of the core element of marketing mix. In marketing mix, we have four P product, price, place, and promotion. Out of this four P, product is one of the important uh, element. Uh, product includes both goods and services. Goods are tangible, services are intangible. It is a vehicle or medium to offer benefits and satisfaction to the customers. After using a particular product, customers are satisfied or dissatisfied, delighted or just satisfied. Importance of the product. Now let us learn importance of product. Product is the focal point of all the marketing activities. If it is the focal point, product is the focal point. What we are distributing, we are distributing a product. What we are advertising, we are advertising a product. What we are actually doing a public relation or a sales promotion, personal selling, all these things are done on what? Product, isn't it? And next importance of the product is, it is a starting point of planning. <coughs> no marketing pro program will come and see product does not exist. This is the same thing what we told. It is the starting point of planning. Based on product, we design our promotion, we design our distribution, we design our pricing, everything. Product is an end also, it's not only the beginning, it is also the end. The main purpose of all marketing activities is to satisfy the customer. This product is an end and the producer therefore must insist on the quality of the product so that it may satisfy the customer's needs. Simply after selling the product, marketing is not finished. We should see whether customers are satisfied or not. If customers are not satisfied, they will not make repeat purchase. Isn't it? So we should see that customers are always satisfied. So these are all important. So product, <coughs> which is the focal point of all marketing activities. It is the starting point of planning and it is also the end. Product level, there are different levels of product. First one is core product, which means the utility which it provides. So let's start with augmented product. So augmented product is uh, the non-physical part of the product, which is uh, the value added features or extra benefits and services that a customer gets along with the purchase of the product. So if you buy a product, you will get uh, after sales service. Then we can say it's an augmented product. We will get free home delivery. Isn't it? There's a list of uh, augmented 
facilities are given down. Uh, providing free replacement of the product, having a warranty period for repairs, and a QR code, access to special events, free seminars, free advice, free coffee, free delivery, free trial period, free gift, newsletters, events. Isn't it? All these things are done in order to attract the customer, in order to give more value to the customer. So in augmented products, you are not only selling a product along with the product, many non-tangible non or non-intangible uh, or non-physical elements and which are adding value to the customers are given. That means some extra benefits we are giving to the customer along with our product. So some examples are given here, you can refer this a light bulb or a laptop examples are given here. So here uh, generic product we have discussed what is mean by uh, branded products. Generic product uh, is nothing but unbranded and undifferentiated commodity like pulses, rice, wheat, etc. which is uh, sold uh, in few villages in India. But uh, in the UAE and you can find even pulses, uh, rice and all sold with a brand name. But uh, still there are uh, places where uh, some products are sold without any brand name. Such uh, pro products are generic products. Branded products, all of you understood. Next category is differentiated product. Here uh, the company is trying to differentiate their product from competitors product. They want to make the customer believe that their product is unique and different from others. Isn't it? Of course, all branded products are supposed to be differentiated product. Uh, so, but uh, that mere uh, differentiation, dif differentiation based on brand name is not enough in today's market. So you can find uh, Apple iPhone which is a differentiated product because all other phones are using Android operating system, but uh, Apple is using a unique operating system. They are differentiated. They are different from other products. And on what basis we can make our product differentiated from the rest of the product based on price? Price is the most common determinant of uh, which target group will be attracted to brand's product. So. Uh, a, a premium product can be differentiated from economical products like Zara's products are considered as premium products. Why Zara's products are considered premium product? There are many factors. One important factor is price. Their products are sold at higher price. So automatically the customers perceive that it is a, uh, a product of higher quality. That is a perception. It's something uniqueness is there in Zara's product. That is why Zara's product is a differentiated product according to the customer. But Zara's products are not like other textile products. Features, we can differentiate our products based on different features, like size, shape, ingredients, origin, etc. Performance and quality, by adding the performance, by adding the quality, we can differentiate our product. Certain electronic gadgets, they uh, have a more memory, more power. For example, Duracell is indeed last 10 times longer than ordinary batteries. And uh, that is why the price of Duracell is very high compared to other batteries also. Next, uh, let us learn customized product. From the name itself, we can identify what is meant by this. You might have heard uh, Rolls Royce are manufactured only after getting the order from the customer. According to the specification given by the customer, Rolls Royce is made, isn't it? So in simple, simpler term, customized products are those products that are uniquely designed according to customer specification. I need a cloth. I'll go and tell the designer I need a cloth with uh, diamonds here, uh, something else here, button these sides. 
So according to my specification, product is made. Then we can call it is a customized product. Example, uh, Nissan, Nutella. For example, in Nutella, customers can add their name on the jar. Once they had this uh, uh, promotional program. And uh, you can learn more about this by reading this. Potential product. Next type of product is potential product. Potential product is the future product inclusive of the advancement and refinement that is possible under the existing technological economic competitive condition prevailing in that category. So we can say that uh, some products which are actually uh, possible to update in future. Such products are potential product. If you can take uh, the example of window operating system. Every year uh, they are trying to update their window operating system. Uh, for example, it was window 7, window 8, window 9, uh, window 10 before the window XP is in date. So today's uh, potential products will be tomorrow's real product. Uh, for example, solar car. We can take the example of a Tesla electric car. These are all actually potential products. So example, if you are asking for example, the computer software industry is a good example to start with. Most uh, consumers have Microsoft products on their computer such as Word and Excel. Every couple of years, these products are upgraded to upgraded to a new version with new capabilities. The prime target markets of this upgraded piece of software are existing customer. Isn't it Android? They update uh, every year. Operating system companies, they also upgrade. Uh, now let us learn the factors influencing product mix. Various factors are influencing product mix like demand. Isn't it? So if demand is not there, we cannot uh, uh, manufacture the product and sell it. Isn't it? We have to discontinue the production. Next important factor influencing product mix is cost of the product. If the cost of the product is very high, we have to increase the selling price also. Ultimately, we will not be able to survive the competition. That is a very important factor. Quantity of production. More we produce, we can reduce the cost because of economies of scale. We are uh, manufacturing a thousand biscuit. Cost of uh, one packet of biscuit may be two rupees. But if you are uh, manufacturing one lakh biscuit, you can reduce the cost to 50 paise or 25 paise. And uh, advertising and distribution factors also the organization does not incur any additional effort to advertise or distribute when company adds one or more products to its product line. Isn't it? So actually advertising cost is the distribution cost is also the all this cost will go into the uh, price of the product. If you have many products and uh, you already advertise and one more product we are adding. That product also will come under the focus of our advertising. For example, Cadbury is having five different types of chocolates and Cadbury is already advertising the sixth uh, chocolate which is going to be introduced by the Cadbury is also benefited because of this advertising, isn't it? So you have to learn uh, so small uh, concepts like product positioning. Product positioning means uh, creating an image of the product in the minds of customer. What is the image of BMW in the minds of customer? It is a luxury car. What is the image of uh, Maruti car in the minds of the customer? It's a budget car. So that way, purposefully, marketers are trying to create uh, an image or perception in the minds of customer. That is what we mean by product positioning. And what is product repositioning? 
sometimes they have to change that image from the minds of the customer. If Maridi wants to introduce a luxury car, that time uh, Maridi wants to reposition its uh, product from only budget car to also luxury products. Product differentiation we have already discussed. We are differentiating our product from the competitors' products, maybe based on price, based on adding uh, new features, improving the quality, etc. Product diversification. Uh, product diversification refers to the product expansion either in the depth or in the bid. That means uh, we are going to manufacture and market uh, products which are not uh, presently marketed by the company. And uh, under product diversification, we are marketing not re related products, different unrelated products we are marketing. For example, ITC earlier, they were manufacturing cigarettes and uh, the government discourages uh, marketing of cigarettes. So they diversified. After diversification, they started manufacturing notebook, class, a classmate notebook, Ashirvat, Atta, Sunfeet, Biscuits, all these things. Another important company in India who are uh, diversifying is Godrej. They have uh, cupboards, locks, safes, refrigerators, uh, air conditioners, so many different products they are also marketing. Product modification is nothing but deliberate alteration or alteration in the physical attributes of the product. Product standardization. That means the lim limitation, uh, limitation of number of varieties of the types of uh, of uniform quality that can be manufactured to reduce the unnecessary varieties. They actually limit uh, the differences and they want to make it uh, same. The products should be of uniform quality, uh, uniform shape, isn't it? For example, nut and bolt. Nut and bolt uh, of uh, a specific uh, measurement can be used for fixing furniture also. It can be used for fixing uh, electronic equipments also, isn't it? The standardized product, same product, uniform product. Product elimination, sometimes uh, if our product, uh, product is having less demand, we have to eliminate the product from the uh, our portfolio. Now let us learn what is mean by branding. So branding is simple, it's a name, term, design, symbol, or any other feature that identify one seller's goods or services as distinct from those of other seller. So different companies having different name, different design, symbols, etc. Isn't it? If you take Adidas or uh, Puma, they have different symbols, they have different name, different design, etc. There are different types of brands on the basis of ownership. There are manufacturer's brand as well as middleman's brand. Manufacturer is, uh, if, if uh, the manufacturer is responsible for its marketing and enhanced customer's loyalty, then it is uh, called manufacturer's brand. Sometimes uh, the responsibility of uh, creating and managing the brand is rest with middleman. And it is called the middleman's brand. Like uh, uh, you can find here carry for brands or uh, Lulu brands. Lulu, sometimes they have uh, their own brands. Is it Lulu? Uh, they have a uh, Lulu's tissue, carry for having their own cooking oil. Isn't it? So wholesaler or retailer, they can have their own brands. So, so uh, the private label store brand, middleman, uh, middleman's brand is one category. And second category is manufacturer's brand. Under private label, uh, one party will manufacture and give the product to another and they will market it under their name. Based on market area, local, national and international brands. Uh, local brands are restricted to local markets. You can find certain products only in that area only. But uh, some products are available throughout the country. That is national brand. 
throughout the world if that products are available then it is international brands based on number of products we have a family brand as well as individual brand family brand is also called umbrella branding uh, for example bajaj uh, bajaj is is a family brand bajaj is having and box or uh, electronics uh, uh, motorcycles auto rickshaw everything under their name so we can call it as a family brand so it is also called umbrella branding which is a marketing practice involving the use of single brand name for the sale of two or more related products when the multiple products of the mar uh, manufacturers are marketed under the similar brand name it is called family brands example is video cone so the problem with the family branding is that if one product standard drops or are not maintained as uh, this reflects negatively on the group as a whole if uh, when uh, uh, so one food inspector found a lead in maggi uh it it became an unpopular product maggi is actually from nestle so the reputation of nestle affected and uh, other products which is marketed by nestle or nestle also can be affected because of the unpopular uh, findings on uh, maggi individual brand when diverse products belong to same category as manufactured by company but have different brand name they are called individual brands individual brand the problem is that we have to separately advertise them we have to separately give a sales promotion programs to them cost is more when it comes to individual uh, when it comes to promoting individual brands private label products are those manufactured by one company for sale under another company's brand products let now let us learn product classification products can be classified into two they are first one is consumer products second one is industrial products we can see here first one is consumer products second one is industrial products on the basis of durability and tangibility we can classify them as uh, durable goods non durable goods services etc so consumer goods we can classify as convenience goods shopping goods specialty goods and unsold goods industrial goods we can classify as material and parts capital items supplies and business services etc on the basis of durability and tangibility product, product can be classified as durable and non durable products and services products which are used for uh, one time or few time it is called non durable products for example a soap which we will be using for less than one month durable products will last long like uh, furniture and services which are intangible inseparable and inconsistent and which are uh, different from products products are tangible but services are intangible now let us see uh, different types of uh, consumer products first one is convenience products convenience products are those products which we are buying from convenient location convenience products are uh, priced less they are purchased frequently there are three types of convenience products first one is staple goods uh, second one is uh, impulse goods and third one is emergency goods so the first one is uh, staple goods staple goods are those goods which are buying which has which are purchased regularly food stuffs we are buying regularly now so we can say staple goods food stuffs are staple goods anything which we buy regularly is a staple good suppose we are uh, playing table tennis and we buy the bowl of table tennis frequently then even that bowl of table tennis 
is a staple goods. If you are playing golf, golf ball, if you are buying regularly, that is also staple goods. Impulse goods. Impulse goods are those goods uh, which consumer purchase without any planning or search efforts. If you are thirsty, we will not see the price and all. We will not see sometimes brand also will go and take some water and drink. Uh, chocolate for uh, children. It is actually impulse goods. So impulse goods are those goods uh, which consumer purchase without any planning or search efforts. And uh, we have also emergency goods like ambulance service and all or uh, when uh, suddenly rain comes, the umbrella or raincoat. Emergency goods are purchased when need is great. The features of convenience goods, they are easily available and required uh, minimum time and effort. They are obtainable at lower price. Price is very low for uh, convenience products. They are not like specialty products. Specialty products are expensive products. There is a continuous and regular demand for this product. Rice, wheat, uh, uh, toothbrush, oh, sorry, uh, toothpaste. All these things we buy regularly every month, every week we buy. Both the demand and comp competition for these products is high. Demand is high for convenience goods and competition is also high for uh, this type of convenience products. Products are easily substitutable. That means if one brand is not available, other brands we will buy. If you are buying a rice of, of one brand, this month uh, uh, there is offer for different brand. We will buy that brand. Heavy advertisement and the sales promotion schemes help in marketing of these products. You can find uh, soaps are heavily advertised and uh, there are so heavy sales promotion program for uh, toothpaste. If you buy four toothpaste, one toothpaste is free, etc. These are all features of convenience product. What will be the marketing strategy of convenience goods? Price. How these products are priced? Very low. Promotion, mass promotion using TV, newspaper, place. These products are widely distributed and you can find every, everywhere. Like grocery, supermarket, hypermarket, departmental store. So all of you understood what is mean by convenience product. The second type of product is shopping products. All of you know what is mean by shopping products. Uh, these are the goods for the customer while selecting the product for the purchase makes due comparison on the basis of quality, price, style and suitability. Before buying shopping products, people will compare the quality. They will compare the price, style, suitability, etc. Before buying a uh, shirt, you will compare the quality, no, you will compare the style, no, or suitability, whether, the, whether it is uh, medium, large, you will compare, no, like that. So shopping products we can classify into two. They are first one is homogeneous products. Second one is heterogeneous products. So hot, homogeneous shopping products, which are looking alike, looking same with the uh, sellers engaging on price war. All homogeneous shopping products will look like same, but only the, because of prices less, we will buy certain product. So competition is mainly made based on uh, price example is white shirt so white shirt is white only we cannot we cannot have a red color white shirt so that is why homogeneous products are uh, compete competing mainly on the basis of uh, price heterogeneous shopping products they are products that are considered to unlike or non standardized uh, here uh, they are different the customers shop based on uh, quality isn't there a price is secondary. Price is not important here because uh, if you buy a uh, Samsung mobile phone compared to Oppo, quality is little high. Or if you buy one uh, shirt of uh, Louis Philippe and uh, compared to any other brand, a price is little higher also no problem if, if quality is a little higher. Main features of shopping products, they are durable in nature. They have high unit price and profit margin. Customers spend adequate time and compares products before making the final purchase. Purchase of such products is planned prior before the hand itself they are uh, planning such purchase. 
important role played by the retailer in the sale of shopping goods. Retailer is an important factor when it comes to selling of shopping products. Marketing strategy of shopping goods. Price. These goods are available at moderate price. Heavy advertisement is done and heavy personal selling also will be done in malls, shops and all place. So you can find uh, all this product uh, mainly in shopping malls and small sh stores, etc. Furniture, clothes, user car, these are all examples for shopping products. Speciality products. Before buying speciality products, people will spend lots of time. They will plan a lot because speciality products are expensive product, isn't it? That is why they are a little bit more careful. What are the features of speciality products? The demand for such products is relatively, relatively infrequent. They are not buying frequently speciality products like camera. They are not buying every month. Products are highly priced. And sale of such product is limited to few places. So you cannot find uh, uh, certain expensive products like uh, uh, Armani's products and all on every store. Aggressive promotion is required for such products. After sale services required for these products. Marketing strategy price all of you know of course price will be high. Promotion targeted promotion by, by both producer and reseller. Targeting only rich people, only those who have purchasing power. Place. These products are not available everywhere, isn't it? Armani's products you cannot find in grocery. They are uh, sold only in limited places. Like jewelry, Rolex watches, fine crystals. These are all examples for specialty products. Next type of product is unsought product. Unsought goods are goods that consumer does not know about or does not normally think of buying, the purchase of which arise due to danger or the fear of fear of danger and lack of desire. We normally don't think of buying unsought products like fire extinguisher, funeral services, all these things, encyclopedia, but we buy because of some fear, because of some situation comes. For example, insurance is an unsought service. So when the agents will come to our home, they'll put lots of pressure to buy. They will tell if this you are not taking insurance, this is the risk, then we will buy. You try to convert unsold goods into sold goods. There are two types of unsold uh, product, regular and new unsold product. Uh, new, regular unsold products, the products which exist, but the consumer does not want to purchase them as of now. New unsold products, uh, the marketed task is to inform target consumers of the existence of the product, uh, stimulate demand and persuade them to buy the product. Like oral polio vaccine was unsold initially, but because of constant uh, awareness, uh, it is used by everyone now. There is no fear now like earlier. What will be the marketing strategies for unsold goods? Price will vary from product to product. Promotion mainly personal selling, aggressive promotion, uh, personal selling where salesperson uh, will directly meet the customer and they will talk a lot about the product, the consequences of not having this product, etc. So life insurance, Red Cross, blood donation service, all these things are example for unsold products. Second uh, type of uh, product is industrial products. The products used as input to produce, uh, produce uh, consumer products are known as industrial products. For example, raw material, which is actually an input to produce a finished product. So a diagram is given here. We can go through this one. Different types of industrial products. Uh, before that, let us, let us learn features of industrial product. Uh, for when it comes to industrial products, the number of buyers are limited compared to consumer goods. Uh, there is, is, there is uh, we, we, everybody will not go and buy a generator or uh, machinery every day, or uh, it's just like only factories or uh, business houses will buy all these things. It's a limited number of buyers. So many number of buyers are not there, but they are sold at higher price. Since uh, there is a limited number of buyers. Length of channels of distribution will be short. 
uh, industrial products are uh, sometimes uh, directly sold to the customer or sometimes one manufacturing representative will be there. That is because uh, there is only less number of uh, customers, so they can easily access the customer. That is why manufacturers are directly selling to the customer. So length of channels of distribution is short here. So mostly these uh, industrial products are technical products. And demand is inelastic, some small variation in price, small increase in price uh, or uh, small decrease in price. That is not a big issue, isn't it? Because uh, since uh, factories need their this product, they cannot run their business without this, these products. Uh, small variation upward or downward in price is not a problem. So demand is inelastic. Demand is elastic when uh, small changes in price will lead to change in demand. But here uh, price is a little uh, changing, also not a problem. Mostly rational buying, not emotional buying. You can't find uh, advertisements of industrial products with uh, uh, adventurous uh, appeal, all this, uh, just jumping, colorful, all these things. Because uh, uh, rational buying is taking place, not emotional buying. So after sales service will be provided. And types of industrial products. First one is material and parts, which we can classify into two. First one is raw material. Second one is manufactured material and parts. Raw material, uh, it may be agri-based or natural products. Is it like sugar cane is a raw material for making sugar. Sometimes uh, manufactured material also use it for uh, assembling the products. Like, uh, which includes components materials like glass or iron. Uh, components materials are further fabricated from aluminium, pig iron, to, like a pig iron to steel, cloth from yarn. Our uh, next category is capital item. They are goods used in pro uh, producing finished goods. They include tools, machines, computers, etc. And the supplies and business services. And uh, they are goods which are required for developing or managing the finished products. They can be of two kinds, namely maintenance and repair item and operating supplies. So maintenance and uh, maintenance supplies include painting, uh, nailing, and operating supplies include writing paper, consumable for computer, lubricants, and coal. Business services can be classified as maintenance service like uh, copier repair, window cleaning, glass cleaning, and business advisory services includes uh, consultancy service, advertising service, and legal services, etc. Uh, managing product life cycle. Next important uh, topic we are learning is managing product life cycle. Every living being have a life cycle. Uh, there will be uh, a beginning, a maturity, and finally it will finish. It will. There will be an end. Similarly, for every product, uh, there is a life cycle. Some products are just introduced introduced into the market. Uh, the sales of that product will grow. It will reach a situation the sales is peak. Finally, sales will decline after so many years because our product is becoming old. New products are coming. Our the technology used for our product may be becoming old. That is why. So actually, every product is having a life cycle, and there are different stages through which all these product pass. The different stages are first one is introduction stage, and growth stage, maturity stage, and decline stage. First one is uh, introduction stage. When, you are, when we are introducing, introducing a new product into the market, the customers will have less awareness of that product. That is why there will be less sales, but cost will be more. Advertisement cost will be more. That is why profit will be lesser in the introduction stage. And uh, this is the diagram which shows the product life cycle. First, there will be introduction stage. We can go through the uh, growth here. Second one, sales are growing after some, some time, after some months or year, and profit also will grow. But uh, third stage, maturity, sales are not much increasing or decreasing because sales are at its peak. Finally, there's a decline, the sales will fall. 
products are actually losing its appeal. You have to read uh, marketing strategies to be adopted in each stage. For example, marketing strategies to be adopted in the introduction stage, growth stage, all these things. So in the growth stage, which is the second stage, sales will grow, profit will grow because customers make repeat purchase. Customers are slowly coming to know about the product. Awareness will be more. Cost will also will be reduced here. Uh, new customers will be added. Third one is maturity stage. In maturity stage, what happens? Sales are already at peak. But uh, lots of competitors will enter. Price war begins here. And finally, decline stage uh, where uh, customers will not prefer our product. Customer will prefer different product. Uh, this is what once happened in Nokia. So sometimes say if our products are not selling well, we have to discontinue the product or we have to sell it. So many products uh, become obsolete or disappeared from the market like typewriter, floppy disk. Now the demand for CD-ROM is also decreasing. Demand for DVD is also decreasing because of that window pen drive or better technology like that. This is the diagram. You have to learn this one. You have to write this, draw this for exam. We can see product life cycle, introduction stage, uh, sales are low, but uh, in growth stage, sales are rapidly rising. Maturity stage, sales are at peak, but in decline stage, sales are declining. When it comes to cost, high cost per customer in introduction stage, growth stage, average cost per customer, but maturity stage, the low cost per uh, customer. In decline also cost is low, Introduction stage, usually the profit will be negative. Growth stage, profit will be rising. Maturity stage, profit will be the highest. And the decline stage, unfortunately, the pro profits are declining. So this is the same thing, what we have discussed already, the marketing strategies. Packaging and labeling. Packaging can be defined as an art, science, and technology of preparing goods for transport and sale. So it includes all the activities of designing and producing the container for the product. So packaging is not just for uh, protecting the product. Packaging has many other functions. Uh, by looking at the package, people buy the product. For promoting the product also, we can use uh, packaging. Packaging is uh, called as uh, silent salesman and many considers uh, packaging as the fifth p of marketing there are four p product price place and promotion some marketers consider packaging is as important as they call it fifth p of marketing mix the levels of packaging we have a primary package secondary package as well as trans transportation package the primary package is the immediate package Suppose you buy a toothpaste, the tube of the toothpaste is the primary package. Secondary package is the next package. You can find a cardboard, small package. Under that, we are putting the tube of toothpaste. So that is a secondary package. Transportation package includes many secondary package, which is put under a transportation package, maybe a carton, which is used for uh, transporting the product from one place to another, maybe in truck and all. Package is very, very important because it provides information. It helps in identifying the brand name. It is protecting the product. It helps in product handling. Packaging decision. What color should be used here? How to package the different product line? If different products are manufactured by same company under same name, whether all package, packaging should be looking same or different, how the packaging design should be. Functions for package includes uh, protection, appeal, performance, convenience. The packaging should be made in such a way that it should be easy to use it, easy to 
uh, keep that product in the shelves of the sh shop. Should not consume lots of space. It should be easy to carry, and even it should be easy to dispose of. Large packaging, you know, diffi difficult to dispose of. It should be cost effective also. By selling a product of five dirham, you cannot make a package of three dirham with uh, some glossy features. It should be cost effective. Types of package, consumer package, bulk package, industrial package, dual use package. Dual use package, you can use it for second time. Maybe a uh, needle, uh, milk powder, if you are buying in a tin. After all, all milk powder is finished, you can use it for putting tea powder also. Uh, strip package, uh, you can find uh, how capsules, uh, medicines and all use it for uh, how it medicines and all uh, pack pills is packed as strip package. Labeling. Uh, label in label you can find important information about the product like a manufacturing date, expiry date, any uh, standards like green dots, ISI mark, and the country of origin, ingredients, warnings, statutory warnings, etc. So you have to learn the role of uh, labeling and uh, the different types of label according to William Stanton, like brand label, grade label, descriptive label, and informative label. Uh, brand label, they are major, major limit to popularize a brand. The brand name will be displayed in large font. Grade label, they will uh, highlight the grades, different grades of tea, different grades of uh, toothpaste or uh, um, any products which are classified based on different grades, A, B, C, like that. Descriptive label, you can find lots of description of the product here. Informative, informative label. So maximum information will be provided through informative labels. So we have to study more about this chapter. Okay, thank you very much.